Um, I am Ian Faison. I do business development for Victory Media uh, and Vetrepreneur. Uh, I am joined by John Panachone, who is a fellow Army vet and CEO of Logic Bay and the co-founder of vet to ceo John works with a ton of entrepreneurs um, all the time with vet to ceo uh, mentoring them and, and doing their online programming, uh, which is really good. We asked him to come on uh, to teach a little bit more about getting started in entrepreneurship, uh, what he sees from the field, um, and what, what entrepreneurs, specifically vets, kind of need to, to succeed in that role. Um, for the intro poll that I sent out, uh, it's looking like the majority of folks here are interested in entrepreneurship uh, or, or want to get started in entrepreneurship but don't necessarily know how. Um, that's, that's a really good mix and it's folks that you know, we're really passionate about, about at Venturepreneur, trying to get folks into entrepreneurship. Um, I'm going to turn it over to John here. John, so glad you could make it. Thanks for coming on and, uh, and really excited to get started. Yeah, thanks, Ian. It's great to be here, and I uh, look forward to the conversation and sharing a little bit of information with the group. Yeah, so for ground rules, uh, we want this to be super interactive. We're going to be uh, posting questions for polls throughout uh, throughout the entire session. Uh, John loves feedback. He loves questions. Uh, if you shoot me a question, um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to ask it, ask it live, and then we'll do a full Q&A at the end here. It should be about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and and we'll go ahead and and get started with the with the session. Please 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 ask questions in chat, uh, and and don't be afraid to ask different things, whether it's private or otherwise. Um, okay, John, you want to get started? Yeah, sure. Um, should we start with the questions, Ian? We talked about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm gonna post another poll here. Um, basically, what we want to know is what do you think uh, as a vet you have kind of like already instilled, whether that's through the military or otherwise, that make you succeed. Um, so you can kind of post those, either either private message or, or public message uh, to the group. Yeah, if I could just add to that, Ian, you know, what are those things that uh, we have as, as a result of military service that gives us good raw material or skills to be a successful entrepreneur? What do you think? So we, so we had one that uh, said sales, we had discipline and motivation, uh, we had marketing as some options that people threw out, um, leadership, work ethic, discipline, again. Yeah, those are all, uh, all good things. Uh, I'm surprised to hear the marketing one, I'll get to that uh, in a moment, but um, you know, let's dig a little deeper. What? Across all the branches of the military, if there's one thing, uh, say training, to give you a hint, for example, what are the, some of the uh, experiences we have during training, training events, training scenarios that uh, might correlate to uh, business and being an entrepreneur? Anybody uh, have a clue on that one? As those responses are coming in, Ian, I will share, you know, most of us don't realize we have these traits till many years after we leave the military. And, uh, you know, you start to realize when you get into a business as an employee that, wow, you're, we feel different. And, uh, gee, I think I could run this place uh, pretty well uh, if given the chance. So you start to realize that some of the experiences you had in the military are actually strengths in business. And oftentimes, most of us don't realize that till years down the line. So it's a, always a good uh, question to ask. And John, could you bring up the uh, uh, the slide that you had on, on what do you think makes uh, what do you think makes vets succeed as entrepreneurs? Sure, let me bring that up. Uh, so it's pretty interesting when we're looking at like talking to investors or different uh, different folks in the kind of ecosystem of startups of a lot of them don't really think that vets necessarily would go into entrepreneurship and they don't necessarily understand the skills that they have. So part of the thing I think is really explaining what skills you do have and, and getting that into the 
into their minds as, oh, hey, I didn't necessarily realize that. Um, so, John, talk about what you've seen with the folks you've worked with. Yeah, so let me speak to that for a few minutes, Ian. Um, you know, we put this comment up here because we, we think strongly, all of us, most of us on this uh, in this hangout, that military service gives us the skills we need to succeed as an entrepreneur. But when you go outside as a fellow veterans and you go to people that never served, you get that, yeah, right kind of response. You know, it's, it's uh, in their minds because they never experienced the military. Uh, very few people can understand or appreciate what the military gives us in terms of being business leaders and entrepreneurs. And it's, it's not really a problem, but it's more of an opportunity to educate people about uh, those core skills. Um, you know, what is it about carrying a rifle as an infantryman or a squad leader or a platoon leader or, or a first sergeant that uh, correlates to success in business as a business leader? So this is actually an issue that we're passionate about at Vet the CEO. And uh, what we've learned through research and uh, through working with many participants is as we get as we leave the military, we actually have four options. Um, one, we can become an employee, and that's pretty obvious, and that's where most of the focus has been, and and rightly so for many, many, many years. Uh, it's about getting a job, helping these transitioning members of the military assimilate into the workforce and get a job, work for someone else. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Most of us will end up doing that, and uh, that's fine for most of us. However, uh, statistics show that about 25% of us, when we leave the military, we're actually interested in exploring entrepreneurship. That's a lot of people. Uh, and there's really three kinds, three ways to become an entrepreneur. One is you can become a contractor, something called a solopreneur, or basically you can own your own job. Second, you can buy an existing business, which few of us typically think about because the last one there, start a business, is where uh, you know all the cool, sexy stuff is. Startups are, are all the rage, and that's who gets all the attention. But there's actually three different ways of working for yourself or starting a business. Um, all of them amount to veteran entrepreneurship. So uh, that's what we're all about at Vet CEO: is just exposing people to those other three options. I remember when I left the military, I got a uh, back then they had green ID cards if you were active duty and red if you were guard or reserves. And I remember they swapped out my green one for a red one and showed me the door and uh, that was it. And I didn't have any idea uh, that entrepreneurship was in my future, nor did I know anything about it. So many, many years later, I have my own company now and then looking back, um, uh, that was not good. Today, a lot of members of the military get lots of exposure to programs and we think that's great. But to answer your question, Ian, we really find uh, we really boil things down to three things in the upper left there, and a few supporting things at the bottom. But the first thing is we're crazy to begin with, and what do we mean by that? <laughs> well, one percent of us actually, less than one percent of us in the United States actually are crazy enough to join the military, and um, a very small percentage of the population actually is crazy enough to start a business. You kind of got to be nuts to be an entrepreneur, but we've already proven we're nuts because we joined the military. So uh, that's a bit of a joke, but uh, there is a reason why only less than 1% of us serve in the military, yet 9% of the small businesses in this country are owned and operated by veterans. And that tells you something. It, it means we take the road less traveled as a group. Uh, we took the road less traveled to join the military, and we take the road less traveled to make a living. Hence, we're more apt to become entrepreneurs than the uh, statistics show it. The second one is what I call the WTF factor, which isn't what you think. What that means for is willing to fail. So my question about training earlier related to this. In the military, when we go to different schools, and the more high speed the school, the more true this is. You know, not everyone gets a trophy. Not everyone graduates those schools or those programs or, those, or gets into those high speed jobs. So it's, a, it's an environment and a culture in the military of a learning model where we try something that's very challenging to us. Most of the time we fail when we first try it. And then we have NCOs and others that tell us how to do it right. And we keep practicing over and over again uh, until we get it right. So that try, fail, try again model is exactly what you need to be an entrepreneur. Uh, in my view, entrepreneurship is nothing but a series of failures 
that's an entrepreneur navigates through uh, towards success. So that exposure to trying, failing, and trying again is uh, what that one's all about. We all leave the military with that. And then the last one is mission first. Um, you know, we're all about team and working with stakeholders to get the job done to accomplish the mission. I think if you were downrange, right, and you had to deal with local population, you had to deal with subordinate units, you had to deal with each other as a team, you had to deal with higher headquarters. All of those folks are involved with accomplishing the same mission usually. And that mentality and the decision making under pressure that goes with that is the third thing we bring uh, out of the military. And those other ones are kind of tongue in cheek, but decision making and operating under stress clearly are part of the mission first one. And uh, the good looks, at least in my case, was there, but has deteriorated over time. Uh, the three things we don't have when we leave the military is marketing, finance, and cash. And uh, none of us join the military to make a lot of money, but we need capital to be entrepreneurs. So we have to figure out how we're going to get that cash. And then most of us, and someone said marketing is one of those things you leave with, I guess you might be right in whatever experience you had. But most of the time, we don't hear that. Most of the time, marketing and finance are those things we don't leave with. Well, uh, so with the, I'll pause John, there, Ian. Yeah, no, that's a great – So, uh, and, and it's funny because I, I – Posted the the third poll and uh, the what do you what makes veterans fail at entrepreneurship? Zero people said sales, marketing, or legal, but people did say don't have a network, uh, don't know where to start was the most popular one. So it's funny that you know this group specifically does have kind of the wherewithal to know sales and marketing, and that is traditionally where folks uh, we see people fail is they've never sold a product in the, their life or their They've never marketed a product in their life. Um, whereas, you know, for the Pacific, for the folks that we have on today, not necessarily the case. Um, and, and maybe that's because they have, you know, some experience doing that. Um, what have you seen from entrepreneurs that, that do have a little bit of sales and marketing knowledge? Well, you know, most of the folks uh, we work with now, let me uh, tell you a little bit about my background. My day job in my office right here, I run a software company. Um, and then I'm also a co-founder of a 501c3 nonprofit called Vet the CEO, where we work with uh, veterans. I've been doing it since 2013. Myself and a couple of other veterans who actually ended up owning businesses all saw the same thing, that there's, there's this need to uh, augment these weaknesses you see on the right side of my, my, uh, my slide here. But to answer your question, we, we work with all kinds of people. Some people have strong bit, uh, backgrounds in some of these uh, disciplines like marketing or finance, and that's great. We deal with, uh, say, Vietnam veterans who may have been maybe working for many, many years in a company in maybe a capacity in finance or marketing um, and bring to the table some of those skills. Our point is that transitioning members of the military, unless you're like in a finance unit in the military, or maybe civil affairs could be closely correlated to marketing. Uh, the military doesn't give us the years of experience that our peers have who don't serve in the military in those critical functions, those functions that are critical to becoming um, uh, successful as an entrepreneur. So hope that answered your question, but we certainly have participants or people we work with that know a lot about these, one or more of these things. Um, but we try to work uh, around those weaknesses that they that they would have to strengthen them enough to become uh, off get off the foot on the right foot uh, when becoming an entrepreneur. And I think you know, and more and more folks are are saying they don't know where to start as the most popular answer. And I think that you know, part of that is what we're talking about is you just need to know the initial kind of piece about getting into entrepreneurship, what are the things that you need to do? What are the, you know, five or six books that you need to read? What are, uh, what is the kind of like 101 sessions that you need to know uh, that makes entrepreneurship different from just going and getting a job? And, you know, marketing and finance uh, are learned connections. You can hustle to get mentors. You can ask for uh, finding buddies. You can network your way into, um, and, and cash is, is ultimately the hardest one. Uh, which is why we have some sessions later in the week on on you know getting cash, but I think that ultimately all of these are things that you can learn, and the and the way that you learn it is extremely quickly. Like the learning curve for vets to get all this information is not super difficult. You just need to find the right programs, and there's ones like yours that are really good and more importantly free 
uh, where you can, you know, get this information quickly. Yeah, if I might add, Ian, you know, in this day and age, you can get anything at your fingertips, right? You can Google anything these days. You can actually find great free courses in marketing, great free courses in finance. Uh, you know, the Khan Academy, for example, even has that stuff. There's open, uh, massive online open courses universities provide in these topic areas. Um, you know, what we've done at Vet the CEO is actually put a seven module program together that leverages a lot of that open uh, source, so to speak, content, the best that's out there, and make it real for veterans. But uh, there's certainly formal programs out there like ours uh, available to veterans, and I can go into those if you're interested. But there's also a lot of information at our fingertips these days, including the books you mentioned, Ian, uh, that approach as well. It's, it's kind of amazing that the tools are all around us. And what we've done at the CEO is actually try to organize those in a way that makes sense for our participants. And I'll throw that in the chat box to uh, the, the free program for Vet to CEO and some other ones that are out there. Uh, since so many folks are, are on this or looking to get into entrepreneurship and, and don't know where to start, um, you know, I know your, your program starts actually tomorrow. So it's a great time to, to sign up for that. It's free. Um, could you go into some of the stats on the folks that you have going through your program, what you see from vets? One of the stats is, is remarkable of how many folks actually drop out of the program. Yeah, let me pull that up uh, since you asked. So um, you can sign up on our website, vet2ceo.org. Uh, maybe if you can uh, put that in the chat there, Ian, I'd appreciate it. Uh, our next program actually does start tomorrow. It's our 18th one. Um, but this is the way our program's designed. And um, Ian, when you're ready and uh, you think it makes sense, I can walk them through some of the other material about the program. But to answer Ian's question, we have, it's absolutely free. Uh, we're a 501c3. We're, we're uh, supported by investors and supporters of our nonprofit. Um, so there's really no limit or cap to the people we can sign up. Uh, as of just before this call, uh, we have just under 90 people signed up and I expect to get over 100 by tomorrow, which is usually what happens for every group. Uh, and it's free to verified veterans or transitioning military. Uh, really right now it's the honor system, but uh, we do sometimes ask for uh, copies of your DD-214 uh, to verify veterans. Very simple questionnaire, it takes about two minutes to sign up. Uh, what we find is that about 60% of the people that sign up actually show up. And uh, during the program, it's seven weeks long, we do experience attrition, and that's by design. The main intent or mission of our program is exposure to entrepreneurship. Why should I even care about it? Why should I think about it? And what are the different things I got to think about to be successful? Um, and we walk participants through that on a weekly basis. And there's a lot of collaboration. I can get into that. But during that process, a lot of folks decide, you know what? Entrepreneurship's not my bag. I'm just going to go get a job. You know, I don't want to deal with it. Conversely, we get a lot of people who get all fired up, uh, who make it all the way to the end. And what, what we're finding is about 15% of the people that actually sign up complete this and many go on, uh, continue to work on their business concepts, which is usually the norm. They have to raise money and we work with them to do that and uh, continue to help them shape their business ideas. But after seven weeks, you're going to know, you know, pretty much know A, if entrepreneurship's right for you or not, and B, you're much well um, polished in terms of the ability to go out and get funding and execute on your business idea or plan. So to answer Ian's question, uh, you know, we get about 15% completion rate and it, it operates in a funnel like this and it's been like this uh, statistically over about 17 prior groups than the one we're starting tomorrow. Yeah, so I think, and you know, my friend and I posted his, um, I posted his in there as well, the Founder Institute program, 100 Vets. Um, they see very similar rates to about 15% actually complete the program. Um, so you're talking about one of the things that we believe is, you know, vets stick to it and they, you know, bust their ass and they're going to do whatever they need to do to accomplish the mission. And yet still 85% of people are quitting free programs um, or programs that are all upside and kind of no downside. And it's not to scare people away from entrepreneurship. It's more that, you know, the reality of whatever 
else you have going on in life sets in, or maybe your idea didn't work and you're going to come back and, and refine that stuff. Um, but there are programs out there that can kind of push you through that. Um, we had a question that, that I'd love you to answer um, where someone asked, what's the difference between working for yourself, being an entrepreneur, and building a startup? And I think that there's a clear delineation, but I'd like you to answer that. Yeah, I think as uh, the other slide indicated, that's a great question, by the way. Uh, working for yourself is great, and it's one of the three ways of being an entrepreneur. I mean, there's something called a 1099, which is the tax form you get when you work for someone else, Hence, but, but you work for yourself. In that case, I highly recommend that. There's a lot of people that do that. Um, so you might have nobody working for you. You're very good at what you do, but you might have, say, five or six different companies or people you do that for, right? And you get money for five or six of them. In my opinion, that's much safer, more secure job than working for one person. Uh, because if you lose one of the five or six folks that you work for and they pay you, fine, you still got four or five more, right? So I highly recommend uh, anybody look at that model. That's actually how I started. I started out as a consultant working for myself. Um, and then, you know, owning a business, quote unquote, usually implies uh, having employees and more than one person or a partner creating like an LLC and other things you would do to create a platform that you're going to scale an organization on. And that's usually the distinction. But, you know, working for yourself is what we call a 1099er or a solopreneur is just absolutely fine. And uh, a route that many of us should take or consider taking. Yeah. And, and I think too, kind of framing what type of business you want to start kind of helps answer that. So I think entrepreneurship is this general title that, you know, and, and, in, in, you know, encapsulates all of this stuff. But starting a business, let's say you really like jerky. One of the folks that, um, you know, a, a friend works with uh, started a jerky company. They really like jerky. They want to sell jerky. Um, you know, they want to basically make enough money by selling jerky that they can, you know, live in their cabin and, and hang out. So let's say his focus was to make $80,000 a year. That's what he wants to do is make jerky and make enough money to survive. He's not trying to build, like, a scalable startup. He's not trying to make the next uh, – Facebook. He's not trying to do anything like that. He just wants to make enough money so that he's comfortable and he really likes to eat his jerky and sell it, right? It, it would be the same thing, you know, making a type of product that would be that way. You never want to turn it into a billion dollar, you know, prize, um, but that's what you want. So I think traditionally, what we've seen by people saying startup is a startup more often than not uh, is kind of labeled as something that is going to be scalable and a business that's going to be, you know, uh, something that could be whatever, you know, multi-hundred million dollar business. But most folks who want to start like a local business don't necessarily to build, need to build something like that. So that's kind of where that terminology, I think, gets a little different. And sometimes you can make a hobby business or a business on the side that you start making enough money that you decide, hey, you know, maybe we're going to take on Oberto or whatever it is and make more, make enough jerky so that this could be an extremely lucrative business. And there's kind of that tipping point of when you decide to do that. Does that answer the question? Shoot me a note if you want us to kind of keep keep rolling on that. Um, yeah, can I add to that, Ian? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think what you described is uh, great, and it really it, it implies another issue we all have to decide when we decide to start down an entrepreneurial journey, and that is what, what do we want our end state to be? So if you want uh, what you described with the, the jerky business is – I would say is more of a lifestyle business and many businesses exist for a lifestyle business. You know, you want extra money on the side, maybe it's a part-time thing um, or it's, or it's a lot of folks turn hobbies into uh, businesses and they want to make decent money and that's all they care about. And that's fine. And uh, if you know that that's what your end state is, then what you described would be a good strategy. Uh, there's other end states like startups where, the entire purpose of the startup is to get it so big to go public or sell it someday. And that is the end state. And if that's your end state, then you take a whole different strategy to running that business. So I'm glad you told that story because understanding what your desired end state is, is going to decide, determine a lot of how you set up a business or what kind of business you get into. Yeah, and both options are fine. It's just, you know, where do you want to do, what do you want to do with your career and what do you want to do with your life? And, and if you want to build a startup, you know, most times you're going to, you're going to try to find a team of folks that are similarly minded. 
Uh, at some point, you're probably going to talk to investors. You're going to be talking, you know, it's a much different kind of world than I want to start a local business or a small hobby business or just something online to make money on the side. Uh, we did last week a Vetrepreneur Growth session with someone who had a Facebook page that they create memes. They have like 35,000 followers and they just wanted to make an extra thousand bucks a month on the side with their Facebook page. They like doing it. They just want to make some money on the side. But there are skills that you need to learn as an entrepreneur to get to that point. And I think that what, that's one of the things that there are, you know, doing something you love and taking that and adding a few extra skills and going through a program and kind of learning the basics of how to do that, you can make a few extra hundred bucks on the side or you can turn it into a business. Absolutely. Um, so, okay, so we had another question here. Um, so we had, are military spouses uh, eligible to go through your program? We do make exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we don't broadcast that we, uh, that we do. Uh, we are, for obvious reasons, we're big fans of the spouse community. The only constraint we have is we're a 501c3 with a charter to fund veteran programs. So that's why we don't advertise that we uh, take spouses, but they're certainly welcome. Anytime someone asks us, we, we allow them to participate, put it that way. Uh, as long as someone uh, you know, is up front and says, hey, I'm a spouse, we, we usually, uh, without exception, we've never turned anyone away. So we had a, uh, yeah, th that's great. And there's, you know, Bunker Labs does, uh, they have they have spouse-based um, groups as well that you could join. And uh, I know the Founder Institute program that I posted earlier, they have, uh, they have a lot of spouses too. So, you know, go to, go to Vet to CEO, uh, Bunker Labs and Founder Institute. Those, those three programs are great. Um, and we'll send that out in the show notes. Um, we had another question about uh, internet-based businesses, uh, like what about Amazon or internet marketing for other businesses? Um, I'm not sure I know exactly what the question is. Maybe you could rephrase it, but uh, for you know, internet-type businesses, like mine is a soft internet software business, business-to-business business, business uh, focused on <laughs> software, not necessarily tied to Amazon, but... Uh, uh, you know, that's just a form of business. So there's a lot of businesses that start and live on the Internet and I have an Internet offering. Uh, the types of things you need to think about is, are no different than if you open a sub shop in the corner, uh, you know, on the corner in your neighborhood. So there's some basic concepts to think about whether you're an Internet business or a premise based business. Well, and one of the things that we talked about last week with uh, the folks uh, on their Facebook pages, they set up a Zazzle.com account where they wanted to sell merchandise. They don't know anything about merchandise. They don't want to deal with shipping. They don't want to deal with anything. So they made mugs and t-shirts on Zazzle. Zazzle takes like 90% of the profit um, and they do all the shipping. They do all the work. And then, you know, as people buy those products. Um, so, I mean, there's, I, I don't know if that kind of answered it. Um, yeah, great point. Uh, yeah, that's that's great. So uh, there's there's way you can kind of set up it in whether it's via Amazon or other to get all the shipping or just internet based business. Uh, you know, checkout, live checkouts, all those sort of things where you can just set it all up yourself and you don't ever have to deal with any of the other kind of like out out processing of that. And you can even outsource customer service and all that. So. Um, yeah, if there's if there's more on that, feel free to, to shoot it back in the text. Uh, oh, another great point. Yeah, TechStars, uh, TechStars Patriot Bootcamp is phenomenal. They do vets and military spouses. Um, huge fan of their program as well. Um, also, the Vet Tech Trek folks, um, they have vets and military spouses as well. Uh, and we can send out those programs afterwards. We have about a 50-50 split of people who are looking for a program or incubator, um, and they're so they're really good. We'll send those out in the notes of which programs we think are, are great, and obviously Vet to CEO is a fantastic one uh, that, that John runs. Yeah, well, since people uh, are asking, uh, maybe uh, I could share one, uh, one thing. Yeah. Uh, let me just pull this up. And what, while he's pulling it up, you know, any other questions? This is, uh, you know, we're... We're about 30 minutes in, so feel free to fire uh, fire any other questions away. We'll do a Q&A period, uh, and while he shows a little bit more about what does their curriculum look like and some of these other programs, there you go. 
Yeah, the, these uh, these programs, actually many of them, including the Crown Jewel in the upper right there, didn't exist just a few years ago. So in, in 2011, actually, President Obama, uh, a joint agency task force was put together and delivered a report to President Obama in 2011 that basically said, hey, uh, you know, we train a lot of veteran uh, members of the military some skills that make them great entrepreneurs and we should wake up as a nation and pay attention to that. And then it's starting in 2011, 2012, DOD started creating um, actually a program to expose transitioning members of the military to entrepreneurship, and that's the Boots to Business program you see in the upper left. They actually started as part of the TAP program or the different transition programs for each branch. Now, when someone gets out, they have exposure to this program that's run by uh, the Small Business Administration called Boots to Business. There's something called the Boots to Business Reboot that is open to um, spouses as well and veterans, not just transitioning members. In fact, I'm sitting on a lunch panel here in Wilmington, North Carolina for a Boots to Business reboot this coming Friday, coincidentally. So that's a great one uh, if you can find one in your area. Techstars, someone mentioned, great guys and gals uh, run that boot camp. Anybody that's ever gone to it just says nothing but great stuff about it. Very, uh, very well run program and uh, started actually in 2012. They were one of the first. Bunker Lab is one of the newer ones. They're in 12 cities across the country. They hope to double that um by next year and they're kind of an incubator kind of model um the issue with the those other three and there's nothing against them at all they do all have great programs they're all started by veterans run most of them are run by veterans although boots to business is tied to a university um that you have to have one near your area for make it worth it and they're what we call premise based programs so our mission of at ceo is to be 100 percent online so we reach uh people from coast to coast, Hawaii, deployed to Korea, deployed downrange. We've had people downrange participate in our program. And um, so we're all about scalability and that's what makes us different. But each program is very good. Uh, and the good news is there's lots of opportunities, not just these four programs, but others like them across the country at a more local level. Yeah, and if you have any other questions on any types of programs afterwards, feel free to, to shoot me an email or shoot John an email, and we can point you in the right direction. Uh, yeah, if you want in-person and you want to be in and around, uh, you know, in-person training, then then definitely uh, some of those programs where you can get and meet with other entrepreneurs or just kind of see what it's like uh, or, or go to, like, a meetup or something like that. Um, Vets and Tech also has a ton of meetups that they do um, in a few cities across the country as well. Um, where you can kind of be in and around technology and startups. There's also community colleges across the country um, offer programs tailored for veterans uh, as well in entrepreneurship. So there, there's no shortage of programs out there, and they're all pretty good. And that's a good thing because uh, just three or four years ago, none of those existed. So uh, it's been an explosion as of late. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let me, uh, John. What's your email address? Because we've had a few people kind of reach out with wanting to to get more information. Yeah, the best way to reach me because my name uh, is uh, really hard to spell is inquiry at vet to ceo dot org. Uh, if you could put that in the chat box, Ian, for me, I'd appreciate it. And then uh, I get a copy of that. And anybody's got any questions, we respond. To, uh, our team will respond to that alias pretty well, pretty quick. If you'd like, Ian, I could uh, go into a little bit more about how the program's designed if people are interested in it, if that's where you're getting from the chat. Yeah, absolutely. All right, yeah, let me uh, just break it down a little bit more um, for you because we really like to get the word out and get as much participation as possible. And like I said, the next program actually starts tomorrow, so it's not too late to sign up. So based on uh, what I told you about on this slide, you know, th the stuff on the right here is actually the basis for our program. So remember, marketing, finance, and cash are the things we typically don't get out of the military. So we have this program called Entrepreneurship for Transitioning Warriors, and there's seven modules. And if you notice, they're modeled after the operations order format. 
So there's two on marketing uh, and there's two in finance and then there's three in between. And that's what the analogy starts with how we think about planning for a business where most of us are used to the military's uh, op board format. So we apply that way of thinking to business planning. Here are the seven modules. Uh, the first two in the upper left are marketing related and answer the questions you see there. We then talk about mission. We talk about mission third because um, many entrepreneurs have this great idea and they're, me included, I was a bull in a china shop, right? I thought the world would just, I would build it and they will come and I was dead wrong. So what we do is we start with the issues on marketing to make sure the market is ready for your idea or product and we really uh, run it through the ringer and then we, then we decide what the mission is. Next modules on tax issues and liability, although it sounds boring, it's usually one of our most popular. We talk about different legal forms of business and the tax advantages of owning a business and some ways to set it up uh, so that you have more of your own cash. Uh, and that's one of the big benefits of being an entrepreneur is how you handle tax issues. And then the next two are on finance. Uh, the first one is developing a financial projection. Believe me, hardly anybody knows how to do that. I didn't know how to do that when I started, but we give you the basics and tools to figure that out. And then secondly, once you know how much money you need based on those projections, the next funding module is about where to go out and get that money. Where are the sources of funding? What are the differences between debt and equity and, and the, the food chain on both sides of that and how to go about funding your business. And then finally, Command of Signal is about networking and boards and other resources that are available to you uh, as a veteran entrepreneur. Each of those seven modules includes uh, these things. So there's a self-paced module. These range in time from 15 minutes of material to about 40 minutes of material. So that's designed so you go through that at your own pace leading up to the second piece, which is a live session. We use a different tool than this. We use Adobe Connect, but it's a two-hour live session. It's from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time, and it's very interactive. Uh, we have lots of chat, question every few minutes. We have case studies, and over those two hours, 30 minutes of those two hours is a guest speaker, so you get some free advice from some very qualified people each week. And, um, you know, that's, that's a big part of our program as the guest speakers. The very next day, uh, in this case, it'll be Wednesdays, you get an email, which has a link to the recording of the live session if you happen to miss it or if you're downrange uh, or you're on the West Coast and you can't make 7 o'clock on Sunday. I know that's a stretch for some folks in different time zones. It also keeps you on track in terms of what you should be doing now. Optionally, we have a fourth thing. We actually set up a Facebook page where participants can uh, collaborate and we also post program material in there. It's a closed group and it's only for the participants in the program. We've got over 60 guest speakers. We've had uh, General McChrystal there in the upper left, uh, second one over, spoke to a group of SOCOM uh, folks that we did a special program for. Then you see everybody in between. I can't go through them all, but they range from young mid-20s entrepreneurs who are veterans that are killing it and want to give back to uh, older folks like me that uh, have come back after years of experience. So it's all about veterans helping veterans. We don't claim to be experts at all. We're just a bunch of people that made a lot of mistakes and we're trying to expose veterans to what entrepreneurship is all about and steer clear of those mistakes. And all our guest speakers would uh, probably agree with that statement. Here's a link at the bottom on to our website where you can actually sign up for the program. And uh, that's a view of our website. The next one does begin tomorrow night. It's not too late to sign up. It takes a few minutes. Again, it's free. And then here are some of the sponsors that have supported our program as well. Uh, we've got a lot of great sponsors. And once folks are done with our program, there is a whole network of people willing to help you. And, uh, you know, going through the program actually demonstrates to everybody that will support you after that you're, you're taking it seriously and you got a great idea and you've, it's a well-vetted idea, excuse the pun there, uh, when you get to the end. So uh, with that, I'll uh, turn it back over to you, Ian. Yeah, you know, and we had, uh, we had a ton of folks respond. Um, that that they'd be interested in, in talking to a, a you know a fellow entrepreneur or a mentor at some point um, 
we also had a ton of folks that are that are interested in learning more about incubators and programs. Um, and, and I just want to thank thank John for coming on. Um, you know, we'll 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 leave this uh, leave the room open for questions. Um, you know, for folks if they want to keep asking questions to John specifically, um, uh, or we can set up you know a time later on for them to talk to you. Uh, and thank everybody for coming out. You know, I appreciate it. Uh, it's Monday, uh, and and it's uh, Mondays can be a little rough. So if you're working on a business, good luck. Absolutely, if you are, uh, if you have a business that that you're running right now, shoot me a note uh, afterwards, and I can I can figure out how to try to get you some, uh, you know, some connections or something. And and John, if you have anything else, um, you know, that you that you want to kind of tell everybody. Well, last thing I'll tell everybody is. It- you know, we shouldn't think about which program to go to. I would tell you to go to as many as you can. We've got many pro- people in our program that have been to several other programs, and the more you could go to, the better. Most of them are free, and I'd highly recommend that you go to, you know, if you've got a bunker lab, if you live in a bunker lab city, like there's one in Raleigh here in North Carolina, and you can afford to spend time there, go there, um, as well as participate in tech stars if you can and anything you can get your hands on because those organizations including ours are all about uh, other veterans helping other veterans and you know every one of them means well and you'll get a lot out of that so don't you know I I consider going as many as you can yeah and I'd say as a as a call to action for everybody 100% of the people who responded to the question would you like to talk to a fellow entrepreneur or mentor um, said yes or yes it's a little awkward so uh, I, I think this is something as vets, I know when I got out, it was super awkward for me, um, and I just kind of cold called and, and hit up people on LinkedIn or otherwise that had a career field that I wanted to follow and just said, hey, could I, could I talk to you uh, for a few seconds on the phone or you know, 30 minutes to pick your brain? And I would encourage folks to do that. Uh, and uh, between John and I, we know a ton of folks that would be more than willing to talk to you about that stuff. So uh, absolutely shoot me a line and shoot John a line. Uh, or the inquiry at vet to CEO because um, you would be surprised or maybe you wouldn't be surprised how many vets desperately want to help other veterans specifically entrepreneurs uh, our community is very spread out but uh, it is it is pretty tight um, if you're talking to the right folks that want to be helpful so um, yeah I, I, I echo your statement as well uh, sign up for a bunch of programs continue learning and iterating um, if there's any more questions just keep keep firing them into the chat um, and, and we'll talk to everybody soon. Tomorrow's session on uh, building uh, scalable, repeatable, and profitable revenue. Uh, highly recommend you check that out. It's with the venture capitalist Andrew Goldner. He is super smart, just like John, uh, and has has created a ton of revenue and wealth um, through their VC firm and also uh, through through as an entrepreneur um, with the GrowthX folks and GrowthX Academy. Uh, so definitely check that out. Um, We'll send out the recording of this uh, probably in about 35 minutes uh, to everybody, and it'll be on our YouTube channel. Uh, and you can find uh, John at, or shoot him a note at inquiry at vet to CEO.org, uh, and I posted that in the chat. We'll send out show notes. Anything else, John? Nope, I did find something with my uh, address on it. So there it is there at the bottom. You can send me something directly if you'd like, or here's some more information about our organization. Uh, yeah, actually, and, and we had one more question here. Um, you know, if, if you had a combat injury and couldn't work for a while um, and now have, you know, debt from waiting on the VA to cover you, you know, that's something specifically, you know, I, I can't answer. Um, but I know that there are a ton of folks that um, are, you know, using the free programs, um, you know, and can't work, for, can't work for a little while and are doing things digitally. Uh, to try to go through some of these free programs. I don't know if you have you had any uh, any folks with uh, you know with like combat injuries or waiting on the VA go through your program, Sean? Yeah, we get a lot of wounded warriors in our program for obvious reasons. You know, you do it all from home. It's online, and um, you know, I would also encourage. I'm a disabled veteran myself, and I would also encourage uh, those of you that are wounded or disabled to some degree uh, to A, go through the program, but B, there's a lot of folks out there that are willing to work with you, uh, especially to set up businesses because that is the most we've been told by those that have done it, the rewarding way to uh, you know make a living if you're 
challenge with some of those challenges some of us have around those areas. So I'd encourage, I highly encourage you to uh, participate in the program and uh, view entrepreneurship as a strong strategy going forward for a way of life for you. And we'd love to have you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and for those for those folks that are in kind of that same boat, feel free to, to shoot us a note afterwards. All right, that's that's all we have. Any other questions? Uh, fire them into the chat before before you take off. And thanks everyone uh, for coming to hang out. And see you tomorrow at 11 Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern for Building 3D Revenue.